On the western side of Victoria Island, positioned on the shores of King's Bay and Queen's Bay, is a small hamlet of Holman, a part of the land claim area of the Inuvialuit. It's approximately 1,000 kilometers north of Yellowknife and is home to just over 400 people. Holman is accessible year-round by air from Inuvik, but most of the bulk supplies are brought in by barge during the summer months. The people of Holman are descendants of the Kapri Inuit, and these people have experienced a rate of economic and social change rarely matched in human history. In the 1900s, the people of Holman would hunt on Banks Island and spend their summer on Victoria Island. And due to their isolation and inaccessibility, almost 300 miles north of the Arctic Circle, they were one of the last Inuit groups to be contacted by Western explorers, missionaries, and fur traders. But since that time, the people of Holman have been transformed from nomadic and independent hunting-based society to one that has become very adapt with new technology from televisions, radios, snowmobiles, ATVs, and they've moved from a nomadic life to a permanent residential housing. And they've also become very savvy business people as well. Today, the community's economy is linked heavily with the arts and crafts industry, with printmaking at the core of the enterprise. Susan Malgulhak is one of the pioneers of the printmaking businesses in Holman. Um, I was born in the Minto, England area, but um, my inspiration to do this artwork was my dad. And from his travels that he would, you know, after he come back from traveling, he would tell me the story of what happened and, or even sing about it, sing songs sometimes. So I used to listen to him a lot and his stories and put some of my drawings onto the, well, his stories onto the piece of paper and they become prints. When we're doing our editioning on that for the, for the year, we, um, well, we send the prints out, the proofed prints out to see if they want them printed for the year or some get rejected, which is, uh, they say no because of such and such. And um, after the, we get the uh, okay from whoever is accepting the prints for the galleries and that, we, um, you call, we do the edition and we do the edition until we're done or we have a limit, time limit for the prints to be done so we try to get them done before um, the opening day. From September till June, it's freeze up. In summer temperatures can rise to plus 15 degrees Celsius and winter can plummet to minus 30 and lower. Like most Arctic regions, this is a place of extreme with 24 hours of daylight from May to the end of August and 24 hours of darkness from mid-November to mid-January. Holman residents are used to the extremes, and even with their technological growth, they still practice their traditional lifestyles, a lifestyle that is family-oriented.
and still in the background, there is the modern aspects and rhythms that touch their everyday lives. They have a well-equipped school for their children, a local co-op store, an airport, a taxi service, a growing tourist trade, and a golf course, along with guided expeditions for hunting and naturalists. Gary Bristow, mayor of Holman, has watched the hamlet change and grow into its modern form. Holman is a picturesque. I hate to say the word, but picturesque kind of community and um, with the ocean on one side and the high hills on the other. Um, the people here are, are pretty happy and easy to get along with. And for, for the tourists, there's a uh, uh, quality art shop, uh, good muskox, polar bear hunting, the nature trails, if they're, you know, if people are interested in the nature part of it, is quite nice. Uh, as a community, we're very active in self-government uh, and uh, busy with the uh, other various departments of the government, and uh, we seem to be getting along quite well with uh, the rest of the NWT and trying to grow and progress the way uh, all the community should be growing. And we are lucky in a way that over the years, through various programs and, and, and the staff that we had, especially some of the outside staff, that uh, we have a wealth of uh, recreation facilities, especially for the kids. Uh, we have full use of the gym. Uh, we have two ball diamonds, uh, a hockey rink that is busy seven days a week, uh, two sheets of curling ice, and our golf course, and especially at this time in the summertime, uh, it is always busy. Uh, we uh, run two or three tournaments in the summer, one for the kids, and a joint uh, one for the community, men's and ladies, then we have our Billy Joss Open, which is a, our annual celebrity type golf uh, tournament. Uh, this year, I think we have uh, 60 some golfers. Uh, and it, hopefully, with the weather permitting, we are going to have lots of fun. Holman also boasts a very talented artist. And we have a summer celebration complete with a king and a queen. When we return to Mopta, We'll meet these people of home. On April 1st, 1984, Holman obtained official status as a hamlet and it became a recognized entity. But it still maintains its character and traditions. The folks here enjoy a traditional diet of Arctic char and muskox. And they also know how to enjoy themselves. Every year, the people of Holman are host to the Billy Josh Open Classic Golf Tournament. First place, Jane Okina. And uh, King of Cambrai.
Kingalik is the Inuvilupun word meaning King Eider. The celebrations begin with crowning of the king and queen. Friday, all day yesterday, and today, through our events, we look for our king to see who participates the most in all around, as well as for our queen, as well as for our prince and princess. And this year's 1996 Jamboree King is Wanda Also, many contests are held like fish filleting, bannock making, tea boiling, seal skinning, flushing, and stretching. And one of these contests are to see who can pluck a king eider the fastest. After concluding the king eider contest, they make a delicious duck soup. Holman was also the home of Helen Kalvik, born in 1901 at Lake Victoria, Canada, and later moving to Holman. Helen Kalvik spent her childhood on family hunting trips and shot her first caribou at the age of 11. Reverend Father Henry Tardy, founder of the Eskimo Cooperative, was a friend to Kalvik and encouraged her to draw. In the 1960s, she pursued her artistic talents that would eventually lead her to many honours and awards, including memberships in the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts and the Order of Canada. She would then pass away in 1984 at the age of 83. But her legacy lives on in the new school that bears her name. Although Holman is a relatively isolated community on the edge of Victoria Island, it has many modern conveniences and facilities. Major mechanical work is completed at the Hamlet Garage. There is a two-nurse fully equipped health center. Doctors, dentists, and medical specialists visit the community on a regular basis. The community also has an indoor ice hockey rink, curling, and a full-size gymnasium attached to the school. Mail is flown in three times a week from Yellowknife, and the co-op store supplies everything from food to parts for your skidoo and your outboard motor. But there are also everyday heroes of Holman as well, and these are just ordinary folks who enjoy living in the North and enjoy spreading the culture of the North to the rest of Canada and the world. Bill McManus is just that kind of Holman resident. This co-op employs full or part-time 22 people right now. Uh, it can go up a few and it can go down depending on the time of the year. Uh, but we also do more than that. We have a craft shop that makes Inuit crafts and it's genuine Holman uh, Eskimo co-op product. You see the label on it. And that product is done by the people of Holman. So not only the 22 people, it's all the people that are doing crafts, which could be 30, 40, 50 percent of the people in the town will do crafts. We also buy seal skins uh, for our crafts. And again, that's employing, not really employing, but it's paying money to our members uh, that bring us in the seal skins. Uh, we also, in our hotel, buy uh, muskox meat. We buy Arctic char, and again, that is from the different local hunters and fishermen. <laughs> We're giving them uh, this income. It's not, it doesn't show up as an employee, but it is income that we're giving to the community. Uh, we have also started purchasing uh, muskox hides. And, uh, up until about a year ago, the muskox hides were of no value other than to the local uh, hunter. Now we've got in an agreement with a company, with IRC, uh, out of Inuvik, and uh, we're purchasing these hides. And again, a lot of money has gone into, there's been over $30,000 gone into the community just from uh, muskox hides. Everyone indirectly can be employed in, within the co-op. Um, at the end of our year, if the co-op makes money, we pay out patronage dividends. Uh, meaning if uh, we have money for the amount that you've purchased, there's a percentage that's going to go back to you and that uh, will be in a cash 
settlement. So uh, the co-op is for the people. It's owned by the people of, of Holman. And Bill also runs a highly successful restaurant and the Arctic Char Hotel. The Arctic Char Inn is uh, owned by the Holman Eskimo Co-op, and it's an eight-room, 17-bed uh, facility. We have a restaurant that we are open to the public. Uh, one of our best, uh, I guess, specials that we have there is muskox pie, and it's a meat pie made with the muskox uh, that we get from the hunters uh, in town. We also serve char when we can get it, again, through uh, hunter trappers, and also a char pie. So it's a, it's a nice uh, assortment. It's not just hamburgers and french fries. We do full meals. Uh, we do uh, special meals for special events. Um, and like I said, we're open to the public uh, as a restaurant. When we return, we'll meet the owner of an amazing one-stop shopping center in Tamapka and the people of Pullman. We're a grocery and retail store. We offer a, a wide range of merchandise. Uh, we offer a full line of groceries. I get fresh produce, milk and bread every week for the community. Uh, with retail, we carry everything from socks and shoes right up to boats and motors. Uh, if we don't have it here in the store, we have a wide, uh, wide selection of merchandise at our retail and uh, grocery warehouse that I can order in for customers whenever they have special requests. Everything from toothpaste or soap that they may uh, uh, prefer to buy as opposed to what's already in the store, right up to uh, parts for their uh, skidoos, Hondas, outboard motors and boats. So uh, if I don't have it in the store, I can get it. So in that way, I think we provide a very good service to the community. Annie Goose is a full-time resident of Holman and is a counselor of the Wellness Center. Community Wellness Plan. Inuit no nakatigit kubaya nakto amik inuot kublugit nalwa kublugit mamit chang nang mik inuosing ni ilan ni ulo kaya nakto aksan na pang mat ayok sa utigib lugo nutagare inuhat inyong nere inuot nalwa kulle ala kublugit kubaya nakto sa mik inuot inuot six ay nik in minut mamit kapalang lutik in iluming ni lunin ulo kaya sa utitik ane kapalang lutik these are the people of Holman. They are a family-oriented community who share the traditions of the past. At the same time, they have embraced modern technology and incorporated it into their everyday lives.
this is Holman, a small Arctic hamlet that has found its place in a modern world. While still retaining its traditional ways of life, they share family values, work and fun. All of the people who live in Holman share in their community. They are part of all our people, the Mopta.